What is up guys? Arna's here. Today I'm going to talk about the biggest downside of Instagram pages, all right? Every business model has them. No one tries to talk about the downside, right? Everyone tries tries to paint the picture that everything's perfect. When business is not perfect, right? No business is perfect. You'll always have problems um, no matter what, no matter on what business you are. Even if you're a contractor or um, you're getting paid by commission, like there will always be problem no matter what business you're in. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Instagram faceless brands or faceless pages or Instagram theme pages or how I like to call it Instagram automation pages, right? Um, first of all, who am I to talk about this, right? So uh, I've been doing Instagram automation, Instagram faceless brands for almost four years now. This is my page, Passionate Income. You can look it up. Uh, you know, here's like, I, I'm tagged here, founder, you know, whatever. I've been doing this for a long, long time now. And we know what we're doing, you know. Uh, we have uh, pretty good engagement over here, like 22K likes, 17K likes. Um, that's for another video. I'm growing a page for my client. We got like 5K likes for him um, and so on and so forth. 18K likes. I'm looking for this one. Here we go. 112k likes in five days. Um, so like I know what's going on in the industry because I'm in it, you know, and I'm talking to people. I'm actually in a network of around 30 million followers right now of different theme page owners who have over 500,000 followers. So I'm talking to them daily, right? I know what's going on in the market because I'm in the trenches myself, you know, talking to these people. I'm in the trenches myself, uh, coaching people about this, right? So I know what's going on right now. And I know the downsides, like from my experience, because I had my page for, you know, four years almost. Uh, and every time, you know, I start a video, if you're new to the channel, welcome. You can check out more of my videos. Usually, like in the recent videos, every time I would start my video, I would be like, hey, my name is Arnas. This is my page, you know, for the new people to give some context. And um, probably this new uh, viewer came in and I'm going to share my screen right now. This new viewer came in and he left a comment. And I don't know if he was like, ha, expose you or he was actually interested in this. And he was like, can you explain why you are stuck at stuck in 1 million for two years now, and now facing a constant decrease for almost two years as well. Uh, so I don't know, like, what's the behind message if people are actually interested in this, but I guess people actually are interested in this, you know, so I thought, you know what, I'll make a video. I answered him. That's actually a great question. Never thought it would be interesting for beginners, but I guess it is uh, because I never like, hide this you know i never <laughs> tried to hide this or anything uh, you know i talk about this in like my free trainings and my paid consultation calls like i talk about this you know like uh but i thought beginners wouldn't be even like bothered to think about this but i guess they are right when they do their research so um i said i'll make a separate video which i'm making now and i said long story short it's usually a combination of two or more things Number one, Instagram violations, which we're going to talk about. And also there's limit uh, on Instagram. But I said, great point. Like, thank you. And if you're watching this, thank you for commenting. Because I never thought like this could be interesting, right? So first of all, let's get into it. Why do pages stop growing on Instagram, right? So first of all, Instagram violations. That's like the number one reason usually people get in trouble um, and stop growing on Instagram. Here's also what I said in the comment. Does that mean your followers become worthless or that you can't make a bunch of money with the page? No, it just means it's harder to grow a new audience on top of what you have already. So if you have a million followers, you know, and uh, you get a few Instagram violations, all that it will do is, you know, it will make it harder to bring in new people in the door. 
doesn't mean you will bring zero in. No, you will bring in new people just by naturally people people sharing your post with friends or sharing it on your on their stories. But it will be harder. Instagram won't be pushing you as much as they would without any Instagram violations. And what does that mean in the first place? So community guidelines and copyright strikes. Okay, so how does that work? So usually, uh, you know, there's no actual explanation, but there's AI bot basically in Instagram, which kind of like goes through all of your posts. And if they find something that goes against their community guidelines, they take down the post and they say, well, this goes against community guidelines. I remember like two years ago, there was a meme of like, uh, it was a meme, literally, it was going viral all the time for everyone, maybe it's even like two and a half or three years ago, and everyone posted it, like even shared the, shared it on their story, it was like, you know, Pablo Escobar, uh, like Pablo Escobar's friends uh, broke into whatever, prison to get him out, or whatever, something like that, um, and your friends wouldn't even pick up the phone call or whatever, or like ask yourself what if your friends would do that. And just because uh, you had that word Pablo Escobar, which <laughs> I don't understand because there are Netflix shows and YouTube videos and everything. But just because you had that word in a post, any post, all of those posts got taken down by Instagram. They were like, oh, this is against our community gui guidelines. This is violence. And I remember I was sitting like, now it's 2024. It was either 2023, like just the start of it, or the end of 2022. I was sitting and a post of mine got deleted, which I uploaded like a year and a half ago, okay? Which was this exact post and it got taken down overnight for everyone, okay? So it's very hard to control this stuff. It's not like you upload a post just to be violent, you know, and you're like, okay, I want to be violent right now, I'll upload a post and I don't care if Instagram takes me down. No, they literally can take down like very old posts, which may have not been against community guidelines when you posted those posts, but now they are, right? So hopefully that makes sense. And when they take down the post and they can sometimes, I had two posts with this same caption. So they took down two posts. Okay, when you have like five posts taken down, like you're in trouble, you're in deep trouble and you get shadow banned, you know, like I said, not that you lose the followers or, or you lose the page, but when you get shadow banned, like five posts deleted, you literally like cannot grow for like a month at all. You're shadow banned, like uh, it's harder to find your page, it's not recommended, you know, and stuff like that. Also, like the Andrew Tate era, so many people grew so many followers in the Andrew Tate era uh, in the business niche, right? They would post like, you know, his clips and get extremely viral. And then when he got canceled, all the pages who used to post him, their previous posts got taken down against community guidelines, right? He was canceled, like makes sense, right? They want to clean up the platform from anything to do with his name. They took down all, you know, the posts, not only his account, like his official account, but all the reposting pages were getting community guideline violations. And one of my students, he actually just like got so many viol violations that he said, look, like I have whatever, six or 700,000 followers. I'm just going to stop posting at all for a year. And let me explain why he stopped posting for a year. Okay. So he got so many violations that his reach went to like tens of millions a month. Okay. Reaching like uh, unique accounts. He went to like reaching hundred thousand uh, unique accounts in a day, uh, in, in a month, sorry, which is like, extremely bad. So what he did is he just stopped posting for a year. And another explanation, why did he stop posting for a year? Because those violations stay onto your account for a year. So, you know, when I got that Pablo post, um, taken down like over a year ago, 
it has already like been off my account. Like uh, you can look it up about your account and like community guidelines. I won't show it because it has some you know information like report number and stuff. Um, so it's not worth showing it. But basically, you can check out all the violations you've gotten. And when it hits a year, when a year passes after you got the violation, like you don't have the violation anymore on the list. Okay. So that student of mine, uh, he basically got like, I don't know, 10, 12, whatever violations and his reach went so down. He was like, you know what, man, I'm just going to stop posting for a year and come back after a year. I think he was doing like an agency at that point for a year. He came back. He started posting and he grew like 200,000 followers like that. Okay. After the violations were like lifted off. Okay. After that year passed, uh, hopefully that makes sense. And another one in general, uh, I wrote here, Instagram limits how much you can grow one page and how much influence you can have. All right. So absolutely in general, Instagram doesn't want you to have too much influence with a faceless brand, okay? If you're an, uh, a celebrity, you can obviously like keep growing because the people come from outside sources. So even if Instagram doesn't like it, like people see you on a, uh, like in a movie and they go follow you on Instagram, they go find you on Instagram, right? With a faceless brand, you're relying on Instagram pushing you out most of the time. Uh, so Instagram doesn't want you to have this crazy influence of having 100 million followers and you posting whatever you want, you know, it's like risky for them because their algorithms will work the same way. So if you have a hundred million followers, like you can post something very stupid, which goes against their, you know, vision of Instagram and you will reach, you know, tens of millions of people with one post. Uh, so in general, you know, there's a limit on Instagram. Okay. There's a limit on how much you can grow. Obviously, like I said, if you're like a celebrity, people come from the outside and I'll talk about how to go around these ways, but usually there's a limit, you know, some people, some pages get limited at a million followers. Some people get limited at 1.2 million. Some people get limited at 1.8. Some people get stuck for three years at 1.3 million and then they keep growing again, right? But there's a limit where Instagram doesn't want you to have such a crazy influence, okay? Um, so ways to go around this, okay? Number one, you can spend money on ads to gain followers, okay? So I remember I worked with this brand, Morning Brew, and I know they, well, I don't know 100%, but I guess they were spending money on, ins uh, on Instagram ads or Facebook ads. It's the same thing, right? Um, yeah, you can basically pay for followers to Instagram. They're going to push out your posts. I've tested it. I boosted my posts with like $50, $100. Um, it works. People come, you know, it's just expensive. You're going to probably spend like 80 cents to a dollar for one, um, one follower if you're really, really good at it. Um, but you can spend money on ads, right? Uh, there's brands which have big businesses outside of Instagram, okay? So they're making money outside of Instagram. And let's say they have a board meeting and they say, you know what? We need to get this Instagram thing up. We need to hit that million followers. We need to hit that 2 million followers. Here's our budget. You know, we dedicate $800,000 this year to just grow our Instagram, you know, and that's it. Um, so that's one way. Another way is spending money on shout outs. So spending money on shout outs is pretty much the same concept, but you go to pages like mine, like passionate income, and you buy a post saying, Hey, follow X, Y, Z page because they're posting whatever, whatever, um, spending money on influencer marketing campaigns. Uh, so another thing is, and I know like big brands do this, uh, they use U UGC content, uh, like user generated content, right? Um, basically they go to influencers who have followers and they can have a hundred thousand followers. They can have 80,000. It, it, it's not a matter of how big the following is, but how like 
connected the people is how big the community is right the actual community they go to these people and they say well please promote us you know we'll pay you uh, and that's how you hear all these influencers make money they get like sponsored deals right um so it's possible with a faceless brand also to go to these pages and be like hey you know if you promote me i'll pay you xyz whatever for this deal um and probably the best one is bringing traffic from the outside so a lot of pages you see who have like um multiple million followers most of the time and i'm not saying it's impossible to grow multiple million followers organically um it's possible depending on your niche you know if it's a meme page it's definitely possible but bringing in traffic from the outside meaning maybe you have a tiktok page with 20 million followers and it's gonna be so easy to grow just like naturally you know just bringing people from tiktok to instagram instagram will be like hey we cannot stop people coming to your page you know they're not gonna remove a follow button from your page if like you already have fans on one platform and you send them to instagram they're gonna follow and they're gonna be big fans you know maybe you have an outside source like a youtube channel people find you on youtube they're like you know what uh this page or this brand or this influencer is interesting to me let me go and follow them on instagram i want to see more of them i want to see the instagram of them you know i want to see some pictures i want to see them traveling or whatever i want to ask them questions on their stories and so on and so forth Probably this is the best way to get out of the, out of the you're stuck in at one point jail kind of thing. Um, yeah, bringing the traffic from the outside pretty much. Um, and there are more ways, obviously, to go around this. But those are like the main things that came to my mind um, when I was making this. And obviously, to answer the question, uh, drum roll. To answer the question, why passionate income does not grow for two years, right? Uh, the, the comment the person left and how we started the video. So first of all, uh, how it all started is very simple. Focus on the page. It moved from growing the account as fast as possible to monetization. And let me explain this very quick. So when I started passionate income, a brand... I didn't know shit about business. Like I didn't know how to make money or anything. I just thought if I have followers, I'll figure out how to make money. And the thing was, I was probably at six or 600 or 800,000 followers, um, more or less in, in that range. And I remember I was only making like $2,000 a month because I had zero business knowledge i wasn't selling shout outs even people were asking for me i was like no this is gonna ruin my page you know i wasn't selling anything i don't know how i managed to even make the two thousand dollars a month at that point you know i was doing some affiliate marketing here and there did a few posts my engagement was crazy at that point and with the knowledge i have today i would have probably cashed in like 50 or a hundred thousand dollars a month at that point because my engagement was like 50,000 likes on every post I would post, no matter what, you know, it was crazy times. And uh, yeah, I was growing like crazy, but I didn't know anything about monetization or business or anything like that. And I talked to the people uh, who've been in a game since like 2016 or whatever in theme page game. And I was like, what's up? Like, I only make 2K. And they're like, man, with a page like that, you should be making 100K a month. Like, I'm serious. Like, you're missing out. Uh, you should learn about business. And then my focus completely shifted from trying to grow as many followers. Like, I didn't care about the followers at all anymore. Uh, all I was caring about is how to make money as quick as possible. Uh, because I talked with multiple people and they're like, you don't understand, man. You don't need more followers. You need more money here. You already have the followers. You already have the 800,000 followers. You know, like, what's going on? You, you need to change your priorities, right? And there's a big shift in my mindset at that point when I was like at 800, then 900. And I ended up hitting a million followers um, 
you know, with the monetization first mindset, not thinking about growth at all, uh, I did hit a million followers anyways, regardless, right? Uh, but then it was slowing down. Like when I hit a million followers, I wasn't focusing at all on growth. I was like, how do I make the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time with this exact page? Okay, so that was reason number one, you know, and, and it was like the first thing that kind of shifted my growth from growing like very crazy parabolically to like slowing down my growth uh, because I already had the followers. I just needed to monetize them. Uh, then obviously Instagram violation started. So like I said, I had a lot of posts taken down. And at one point, I think I had like nine or 10 posts uh, removed for violations. And when you have that, like, it's very hard to reach outside of the following you have, okay? It's completely normal, it happens. Business is ups and downs, you know, especially when you have a lot of followers, like, and you're posting whatever, five to eight times a day, you're gonna, you know, hit some Instagram violation sooner or later uh, if you do something wrong, you know. And I was learning uh, as I was going, so I didn't know about Instagram violations and that that existed in the first place even. The first time I saw it, I was like, shit, like, my page probably got taken down, but no, it was just like a post getting taken down. And if you talk to anyone who's been in a space with a lot of followers, uh, at least for a year, they probably had a violation um, once or twice, you know, and there are some precautions you take to kind of go around them. And now I know, you know, how to, I, I try to go around them at all costs. And I haven't had like a post taken down for whatever, six months now or so. Um, then the third reason is focus of content. We switch niches, niches and content format for better future equity value. So, you know, I was focusing on money, money, money. And then I was uh, talking to a lot of business people because influencers are broke. Influencers don't make money. Only business people with followers make money. So I realized that and I was talking to a lot of these business people and they were like, man, you could sell your business in the future for millions of dollars, you know? And I actually, at that time, uh, I had a few offers close to seven figures, okay? Close to a million dollars to sell my page, um, still hold some equity and, you know, join a company which would acquire me. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I actually got like a tangible offer. Means if I can improve the page, if I can hit my KPIs, if I can attract the right people, I will be able to sell for even more. So uh, focus of the content really shifted. You know, I, I used to post anything that just gained followers. That was the whole point, you know, but then I realized, okay, if I really want to attract the right buyer for my business down in the future, I need to focus more on like finance and business and business news type of content. Um, which you can find on like media outlets who talk about business. Um, and um, yeah, I just literally switched the format to, we went from reposting reels to not reposting anything at all uh, down the line. So those things changed, right? Number four, we redefined the content to attract our perfect avatar. So look, this is extremely important. You know, the person said, you're stuck at 1 million, you don't grow. It's not that, you know, the page doesn't grow. It's the fact that we're growing at the same rate as of people unfollowing me. Okay, so that's completely different. So I'm still growing the page and I'm getting rid of people who don't serve me. So um, we went from 35% USA audience, okay, which was around 350,000 to four, uh, 46% USA audience, which is 460,000. So I actually, in the time I'm stuck and uh, at 1 million, I grew 110,000 just USA followers, which right now is like my avatar I'm targeting, okay? Older USA audience, not like young people. Uh, and we're, we're trying to get rid of uh, 
third world countries, right? So we're, we're getting rid of them, okay, successfully. So again, you know, our content is targeted to people in the US who understand the business news and so on and so forth, uh, who understand entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship rather than attracting everyone and anyone just because the video is motivational, you know? I'm very focused on US audience because I know in the future, the equity will be higher if I have 60% or 70% US audience. So um, our content is redefined. And when people see the content from third world countries, they're like, this doesn't make sense. Uh, this is USA stuff, you know, uh, they don't want to read it. So they're like, I'm going to unfollow this page. But the new people who see it from the US, which is my target market, that's my target avatar, um, they see it and they're like, okay, great, I'll follow. Uh, so, you know, the numbers stayed the same, 1 million, but it's not the same 1 million people. Like, probably 30% of the people changed. So around like, I lost, you know, whatever, 300,000 followers, but I gained new 300,000 followers, which are better now. So I'm, I actually made the page better. I'd rather have less followers. And that's what I realized. Uh, but very high quality followers from like specific countries, target avatar with specific interests, rather than have like 10 million followers, but they're all over the place. No specific interest or niche, very general, right? Uh, so I realized that and we made a change with my team. And also, I added a lot of content limitation. So for my team, my team cannot repost or use existing content. Um, so basically, uh, the reason we're doing this is, again, I'm trying to build a brand. I'm building equity in the brand. I don't want any reposts. I don't want any more violation strikes, okay? And we made this change very seriously only like four months ago or so. Uh, which makes it harder to grow, right? When I tell people when they start a page and their goal is to grow the page, I always tell them like, find what's already working and use it in your advantage. Use the algorithms in your advantage, you know? You see something's going viral on TikTok or Twitter, use it in your advantage, repost it, repackage it, repost it, okay? That's what I always tell people. And you know, they listen to me and they grow big. But my focus right now is to sell the brand down the line and build as much equity. So I told my team, look, we're not going to repost. We're not going to use copyright pictures. We're not going to do this, that, that. I added a lot of content limitations, which, you know, even if my team finds something going extremely viral, sometimes we can't even use that, right? Like, you know, it makes it harder to grow when your content is extremely limited. You know, we mainly use now AI generated images with a banner, you know, we're not doing reels because when you do a reel, you're reposting someone and I don't want to repost anyone. Um, and I mean, there's many things we could add or not, not add, you know, but with the content we're posting right now, it's just limited and it makes it harder to grow. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, there are probably more smaller reasons, you know, uh, but hopefully this video explains everything completely like fully. And I probably should have said this at the start of the video, like the biggest downside of Instagram faceless pages. What is the biggest downside? Well, you can get stuck first of all, um, or like stuck, you know, you're just, going to lose followers at the same rate you're growing followers. So it's going to be changing people, you know, people going to be changing. Uh, but your number of followers is not going to grow. And also, um, you're limited probably with one page to make up to $40,000 a month, you know, unless you're like the top 0.1% page, like at wealth with 10 million followers. Uh, but they have invested like crazy amounts of money in their page. You know, I have invested like zero on ads or marketing or whatever, just like team costs. And, you know, that's it. 
editing and graphic designer costs. So I just used what Instagram gave me to gain my attention, whereas these other pages used money to gain their attention. So it's way different business models, right? Uh, but basically, you can probably make 40K if you're really good with one page, okay? So that's the limitation. And for most people, $40,000 a month is like absolutely insane. It's a dream come true. So like, I'm not saying all the pages make that, but like if you're good at it and you're in the game and you understand how this works, you're limited to making like thirty-five to $40,000 a month with one page. That doesn't mean you can't start a second page or that doesn't mean you can't reinvest that money into another business and make more as you go. But with this exact business, those are the two downsides. You're probably going to stuck when you hit like a million or over a million and you're probably not going to make more than 40 K a month. The reason is you just physically like cannot post 10 ads a day, which are high quality, you know, like it's impossible. There are pages who have done it. I've seen like millionaire mentor. I think at one point they were posting like 12 ads a day. I mean, come on. But his page was just absolute trash at that point, you know, because all these ads were trashy, not quality, no quality control at all. Uh, so it's just impossible. Uh, obviously, well, it's possible because there are pages like Millionaire Mentor and like At Wealth, which are making well over a hundred thousand dollars a month with their page. Uh, but those are like, you know, top one percent of one percent pages. Uh, uh, but us guys with like a million followers, 2 million followers, 3 million followers usually get stuck with one page at 30, 40 K a month. And then we start a new one or we start a different business. Um, so those are the downsides. Now, you know, it, now, you know, all the downsides of, um, Instagram automation, right? Uh, now you understand why pages don't grow. Another thing to mention they don't get stuck at 20K followers, okay? They usually get stuck at like a million, okay? Or 900K or whatever, 1.2 million. That's where the pages get stuck, okay? They don't get stuck at a very early stage. Uh, like I said, Instagram limits what you can do. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know your ideas because you saw like this person left a comment and now I made like a... 35 minute video or whatever, uh, like it's 33 minutes now. So if you leave a good comment, I'll make a video about it. Okay. And I love making these videos. So subscribe to my channel, check out my previous videos if you're new and go follow me on Instagram at owner Arnas. Okay. Check out my name, owner Arnas. Uh, and also if you want my help, either follow me on owner Arnas or check out the link below and join Instinct Income School. Peace.